Okay, let's look at vertex animation textures for MetaSpark, a great way to bring in any deforming geometry into Spark without using bones, super performant. And uh, we're going to look at the workflow from Blender to Spark. So I'm going to start with this GitHub repository. The link is in the description. And I'm going to start by just downloading the zip file to my desktop. Now, going to my desktop, unpacking the file, um, and going to the folder, we are going to start with the Blender side of things with this vertex animation.py PY plugin. So going to Blender, we can install it by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and navigating to the just downloaded file here. Now we have to activate it here, and it will show up in the sidebar over here. So let's make a deforming object. So I'm going to make a torus, set it to shade smooth, add a simple modifier to it, simple deform keyframe, the angle over to a frame 100, and set it to minus 45 degrees. And now I'm going to adjust the frame range to fit 100 frames. And if I scroll back and forth, drop to the timeline, you will see that it's animating. Now the vertex animation plugin already took care of the end frame and I'm going to set the output directory directly to my desktop and just select the torus and hit process anim meshes and that's it now moving back to my desktop I can see what it output so it's the torus fbx here which is the output mesh and then a bunch of textures which are the normal and the position coordinates for this animation so let's look at the spark side of things here I am in Spark, and the one thing we have to do first is set up Vertex set Texture Fetch. So I'm going to go to Project, Edit Properties, Capabilities, and Add Vertex Texture Fetch. All right. So now I can just take all of the stuff from my desktop and just drag and drop it into Spark. So the textures are going to get compressed automatically by Spark. We don't want that, so we're going to set the compression to none for all of the uh, platforms. So let's look at the torus itself by moving it over here. So that's the torus from Blender. But as you can see, it's not moving yet. We still need the shader. So I'm going to go to Spark Bad Examples and grab the Spark BAT, Vertex Animation Texture Shader, and put it into Spark. So now I can go to the material and set this shader type to VAT. So now I have to populate the entries of this shader with the output of the Blender script. Position high, position low, normal high, normal low. And now if you move from 0 to 1 in this frame number, it will play back your animation. So I can just connect it with an animation loop player and you can see that it will play. But what you also notice is that it looks a little bit off. So one important thing that we need to take into account is this scale factor here, 0.48. This is what the plugin tells you. So you have to enter this in the scale factor of the shader. And there you go. This is the animation playing. So you will notice that the uh, torus is just red. So the shader has the diffuse texture slot, so we can put any texture here. We can maybe make a screenshot of something. And um, just um, drag it in here, select it from the desktop, and then in the, the material you can assign that texture. And it works. <laughs> Amazing. But what you can see is that it will not react to light. And the reason is that this shader really only takes care of the position of the vertexes. However, I did include two different shaders in the project, which you can use, which is a matcap shader, my personal favorite, or a PBR shader, which is less performant, but people like. So the PBR shader, you can just take those two files, PBR is the PBR shader itself, and PBR that is basically a shader which combines the PBR shader and the vertex animation texture shader. And again, just drag and drop it into your project. And now if you change the... Um, Shader type to Spark PBRBAT. 
um, you will see that it will actually react to light. Another thing that is great for vertex animation textures is its performance. So we have this little croissant guy here made by Anastasia Shedu, which is, has the attribution non commercial license. So thank you, Anastasia. Um, and I just ran it through Mixamo to add a bit of uh, animation. And so we have the walking croissant here. So you see on the left side, the bone based animation. And on the right side, the same animation, which I ran through the Blender plugin, as I showed you before. So now let's do something. I'm just gonna hide this guy and for the um, skeleton based animation, I'm just gonna duplicate it a bunch of times. So this is running on a Mac M1 Air. So it's actually a fast machine and you can see I can duplicate it and do a bunch of them without having a lot of drop in frame rate. But now if I duplicate them more, you see that it starts getting pretty jittery and I, I can barely move. So let's do another one. So it gets pretty slow and on a device, um, meaning, a, a, you know, a phone, for example, it will get even slower. Let's delete them and look at the same for this guy. So this is a, a vertex animation texture shader based guy. So let's just do a bunch of them and observe if performance degrades. So now it's six. And I can do more of them, and I can do more of them, and I can do more of them. And even more. And now let's select all of them, move a bit back, and let's do more of them. And more. And more. So I hope you see that it's actually way, way more performant than using bones animation. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Have a lot of fun with the plugin. If you have any issues, add it to the GitHub issue page here and uh, let me know.